Um, so here I mentioned parabiosis, but I want to now mention um, an insight that's pretty recent, which is that cell-cell communication does affect epigenetic clocks. And you can see several different vignettes in the literature. Um, so what is cell-cell communication? Well, um, whatever goes through your blood plasma, for example, could be hormones, could be exosomes. And um, here I show you a very recent paper from Harold Ketcher and Rudy uh, Goya and um, Akshay Sangavi and Gordon Lauk and many authors where we investigated m male rats and we um, administered a treatment uh, fundamentally based on exosomes. Interestingly, exosomes extracted from pigs. So Harold Ketcher developed a treatment um, that he then applied to these rats. And what you want to do is to compare the red bar to the orange bar. In diff um, what you see is we start with rats that may be two years old, two year, two year old liver. And after we administer this E5 treatment, it's called exosome treatment, we see drastic epigenetic rejuvenation of multiple organs, blood, liver, heart, to a lesser extent, the hypothalamus, you know. And um, these results are so dramatic that I initially really s struggled even believing them, you know. But then, um, as I mentioned, there are several other people who have worked in that space. For example, here I show you a study of this parabiosis idea. You connect an, the circulation, uh, circulatory system of an old mice with a young mouse, and then you collect the organs two months later after you detach these mice, and they, you still see benefits, you know. So um, parabiosis has the expected effect. But I could show you, um, and here, let me finish with the human study. Uh, James Clement did a phase one clinical trial where he injected umbilical cord plasma, high concentrations of that into um, older adults, and um, Grimage was slightly rejuvenated, you know. So I see plenty of evidence in the literature that this young plasma idea and um, affects epigenetic age, you know. Um, okay, maybe I'll stop here. Um, any questions at this point? Yeah, go ahead. Can you tell us what happened when it was the nice lifestyle? Uh, you know, the, uh, yeah, L let me start uh, with, uh, yeah, I want to be, give you precise answers. So I'll start with this rat study. Um, there are unpublished data that show that this also extended the lifespan. As a matter of the fact, I think the Guardian or a newspaper wrote an article about the oldest rat that ever lived. I think the rat is called Sima, and that rat was treated with this E5 compound which is a stunning result. And then I have a collaborator, Rudy Goya, and he inject, injected young plasma um, also into rats and also observed the longevity effect, you know. And um, yes, so that's one answer. So one would think it has an effect. Um, when we come to parabiosis, the answer is a bit more complicated. Um, parabiosis, where you stitch together two animals, is actually quite stressful to the animal, and both have a shorter lifespan. But in that paper, they also showed an, a lifespan advantage. Maybe um, I want to talk a little bit about history. There was an American scientist, I think, uh, McClive. Um, he invented caloric restriction. He was the same person who invented, quote unquote, heterochronic bi parabiosis. And he also used rats and also showed a lifespan benefit of, um, so it, these findings are quite old, you know. <laughs> they go back to the 1950s, you know. But what we now understand, see, in the past, people just measured lifespan. Now we can look at the genomic biomarkers. Yeah. Um, 